The other day, I was about to buy a shirt, and a friend said to me, don't buy those. Those are made by child laborers in some foreign sweatshop. And I had that moment where I tried to still justify buying it. I thought to myself, yeah, but the kid didn't even write help me on the back. He's not even trying. You know, give me a telephone number, a map, something. How am I going to find you, little buddy? <laughs> But we're such a complacent, apathetic kind of people, they could actually come out with those shirts, and people would still be walking around like, oh, you got the help me shirt? That's awesome. Oh, yeah, I got, I got the I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah, my shoes are made by my fingers hurt. Mm hmm My baseball cap is made by, go f yourself, stupid Westerners. I give this hat crabs. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's where they got the name Banana Republic. It's just a riddle from some kid trying to tell us where he was. <laughs> But sometimes life imitates comedy, and notes like that from sweatshop laborers are showing up. Several have been found in Primark stores in the UK, and last year a Kmart Halloween decoration was found to include a please help us note from a prison laborer in China. The man was in prison for the crime of belonging to the wrong religion, and he was forced to spend every day making half price plastic Halloween skulls for lifeless suburban American kings and queens of mediocrity. And, and despite the fact that, that that skull will not biodegrade for like 10,000 years, probably choking out a dozen porpoises over that time. The owners will throw it out after a single use, a single evening of making six-year-olds mildly nervous. So, so then the slave laborer has to make another stale, insipid decoration for next year. That laborer could retire if people would just hang on to their $3 holiday sh from year to year. Entire civilizations worth of craptastic plastic fiestas are being tossed into the trash bin every month. You know, there, there are 13 year olds mining precious metals in Africa to make your cell phone work, and they could retire too, except the planned obsolescence means they have to dig up new metal for your new phone every eight months so that you can receive urgent text messages about whether Betsy got a boob job. And of course she did, and that's okay. It's her choice and her body. <laughs> and slave labor is only one of the problems of these products sold in your favorite stores. As you probably know, a factory in Bangladesh collapsed last year, killing over 1,100 employees. Many well-known U.S. brands are still refusing to sign a safety agreement that simply insists on safe working conditions for the people being eaten alive by globalization. So what's the answer? I'm not trying to be a hypocrite here. It's nearly impossible to find clothing made in fair conditions. I, I, I don't know what to wear anymore. What are we supposed to wear? You know, this, this pack, past week, I covered myself in free-range orange peels and <laughs> underwear made from tofu and termites. And they kicked me out of the dance club for smelling like Charlie Sheen on a downswing. But, but we could begin by paying attention to the biggest brands and how they treat their workers. It wouldn't take much pressure for, for you know, to make a, a corporation like Walmart realize it's of great benefit to their bottom line to sign the safety agreement. And if that fails, I know how to end child labor. Let's send some of our good old American children to the sweatshops to teach the Bangladeshi children how to be lazy a-holes, right? <laughs> and then the boss will be like, make the shoes. And the kid's like, bite me, <laughs> You're not my real boss. <laughs>